Welcome to the thoracic spine. We're going to get really into this, and this is exciting. We're going to cover the structure, the muscles, and the nerves. So first, when we look at the structure, you've got to look at the entire thing because you can't isolate. Just like you can't isolate a thyroid or an adrenal or a heart, they're all part of one system. One action is going to affect the other. This is why the cervical spine, if there's forward head carriage, if there's loss of curve or something, all those muscles that support the skull are going to attach at the top of the thoracic area. So that's going to be a structure. But also the vertebra, the vertebral bodies are completely different. Like, like back when I was in school, we used to have a bag of a disarticulated spine. And you had to go in there, pull out a vertebrae, and identify what level it was. So, I mean, it, they look similar, but they are totally different, particularly when you're talking about the thoracic one. Now, the thoracic one has the ribs. And this is hugely important because these ribs actually attach to the front part of the vertebral body. So they're incredibly strong, incredibly strong. Now, fractures on the ribs occur on the side about 90% of the time, a little bit more than that. Uh, they don't occur in the front because we've got cartilage that connects the ribs to the sternum. And that's that breastbone right in the middle. And what's wild is you need that spring ability to withstand shock. And also when you're breathing, the ribs move in a bucket handle action. Now, when you're looking at percentage of fractures, now men have larger chest uh, generally. And this means that 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 their fractures and the male bone density is a bit bigger, okay, than most females. So you're going to look at the fractures. The ones, ribs at the top, hardly ever fracture. I mean, that would be a very, very significant injury. Uh, the sternum rarely fractures. Now, I actually happened to have fractured mine back in the early 90s, but I had to get hit by a car, so it has to be a really significant impact. But then the bone starts just about right here connected to that sternum via the cartilage. So this is a costochondral junction. So there's a lot of springability here, but the fractures generally occur on the side. Now here's a, you know, obviously there's some thoracic issues there, but you can see the fractures on the right hand image. And that when they're disassociated like that, that is a hard one. Now people will talk a lot, particularly chiropractors, about the head of the rib, the rib head. Okay, the rib head's on the inside of the body. You've got lungs, okay, in this plural space connected to that side. You've got at least a couple of inches of meat of the paravertebrals on top. But what happens is anything that happens to the rib, you can see with this picture here that it's going to negatively affect the, the, the spinal column, spinal canal. So this is why when you're adjusting, you've got to adjust not just the ribs and the thoracic, but any impact on that rib can affect the spine. And this is hugely important because in the thoracic area, the canal where that spinal cord goes is very, very narrow. It's, you've, got, you've got different meninges in there. You've got fat. You've got lymph tissue. I mean, it's crowded, but the thoracic area doesn't have a lot of movement, so it doesn't require a lot of space. And just know that that junction of the cartilage and rib, and this is one of the things that we see on, on x-rays a lot, when we see that, that the cartilage is starting to ossify, uh, doctors will say, oh, it's calcium deposits. No, I, I figure that to build this uh, cartilage, okay, this costochondral junction, it requires a huge amount of amino acids. And as we age, we produce less stomach acid. So if you're not supplementing with, uh, we'll say, collagen, um, if you're not supplementing with, with good amount of proteins, but bone broth is excellent, there's a lot of ways to get that collagen in the system. And if you're vegan or vegetarian, there's plant-based collagens, okay? Plant-based proteins that you may be able to absorb. But this, the structure, if you have less stomach acid, it becomes brittle. It loses that flexibility. This is why if you don't have that shock absorbing, you're increasing fracture. So your diet, nutrition, and stress level are essentially important when you're talking about building a healthy body. Because this is an amazing structure, but it's literally a stable platform for your arms to come out and to work off of. 
Now, distortions of the spine, you're going to see this a lot. Now, this could be an adaptation from a congenital anomaly, vertebrae that didn't form correctly. The majority of the time, it's really the body adapting. So when you look at kyphosis, hyperkyphosis, sway back, that's the body rounding over. Now, if you've had some type of physical trauma in that thoracic area, your body may increase the curve to take the pressure off the nerves that exit the back half of the spine, particularly when we're looking at the base of the neck. Curving up there is vitally important because those nerves supply the heart. It's also the start of the autonomic nervous system. Now, the muscles, you've got multiple muscles in between the ribs, okay? And these, every time you breathe, the ribs move in a bucket handle action. So, so those ribs are always moving. And then you've got the pectoralis, major, minor. I mean, all of these muscles attached to this thoracic area. In fact, your shoulder has one bony attachment. That's the clavicle. 18 muscles bolt that, that shoulder girdle onto this thoracic area. And so it is literally a stable platform for cranes coming off of it or for your arms. Now, the muscles that run down either side of the spine, they literally are called postural muscles. Like you can tighten up the trapezius, you can tighten up a lot of the muscles, and those are called phasic muscles. But the intrinsic or the paravertebrals are completely different. Just know that what those muscles do, they fire off differently. And in fact, when you're bending off to the side, those muscles are not not contracting on the inside of the curve to bend you over. The muscles on the outside are tire firing off to slow your descent so you don't fall over. And when you have an increased curve, that hyperkyphosis, the bummer with that is you also decrease the lung area so the system could become more acidic. This is why paying attention to if the shoulders are rounding over or if they're not or if there's a structural deviation, you've got the lungs that do that carbon dioxide oxygen transfer. So it's hugely important that you look at the, stru the structure. Now, if that heads forward for every one inch forward, the pressure on the cervical spine doubles. That means that your body is going to be firing off those muscles that you don't have conscious control to reposition that 12 to 18 pound head. And if, there's, if it's off to the side or off to the other side, we're going to see all the muscles that support that occiput stop in the top of the thoracic area. So this rounding over the shoulders typically is an adaptation for a loss of curve in the neck. So you know, we've got to get away from doctors that, ooh, it hurts here, look there. You've got to look at the entire structure. You've got to look at the lumbar, the cervical spine, everything, and not based on pain because 90% of the nerves that come off the spine, there's no pain fibers. So forward head carriage is incredibly important, particularly when you look at, at this picture here. This patient's got forward head carriage, but you can see it. he doesn't have a really smooth kyphosis. It's almost like flat and then there's a bump. And that is the body adapting from generally an, an a abnormal or uh, some type of past trauma, an abnormal structural deviation. And so bodies will lean forward to get the pressure off of that. And these postural muscles, they are not under conscious control. But here, you got to think about this. So if you have somebody with chronic tight shoulders, that head is forward. What do people typically do with tight muscles? Well, they'll relax them. So if these muscles are trying to reposition because of a past neck trauma and you relax them, which way is the head fall forward? Bam, further forward. So de-stressing out the thoracic, you've got to look at the lumbar and the cervical spine. Hugely important. That's why when we give exercises, and these are very, very simple exercises, you could use your shirt, a dish towel, you pull down with about two pounds of pressure, and look up, kind of like a turtle looking out of their shell, and then you go back to normal and relax. So we recommend after, and we give these exercises after we've done, uh, uh, you're talking static and stress x-rays, physical exam, range of motion, because if you have a lot of cervical fusions, congenital anomalies, this might not be a good exercise for you. So you got to actually look at the structure. And this is my favorite one. So if you have a kid that let's say had some kind of birth trauma. Hugely important that because they're not going to sit there and do a neck exercise, but you can say, honey, go in there and watch, you know, 20 minutes of, of your favorite cartoon. 
Okay, just like this. And that's going to help them. So there's ways to get everybody to do this. And then what, what we're looking at, you can see before and after, before significant lateral deviation. But what would this do? So if you're bent off to the side, it's harder to transfer oxygen to that blood and get rid of the carbon dioxide. So what do you think is going to have to happen? Well, the blood pressure is going to increase because you're not getting that oxygen carbon dioxide transfer. So afterwards, oh my gosh, the body is functioning better. So you've got to look at any type of structural deviation in the thoracic area. Um, and you've got to look at any aspect of the cervical spine and the lumbar. You got to look at the whole thing. And again, here we go. Before, after. Now, the top of the thoracic area, the top of that ribcage area, that is incredibly important for the nerves that supply the heart. Just know that to deviate, to have a structural problem in the ribcage took a huge amount of force. I mean, this thing is, is got 12 ribs on either side of the spine. It's the most protected area of the body. So to have a dent in that, like this patient, in the before, man, afterwards, it's nice. So now... This is a self-decompression that you could use. And I have it placed here at the bottom of the elbow is the bottom of the roll. And he's going to be just putting back there. And all it is is a four-inch diameter foam piece that's not compressible. You could use a plastic water bottle. If you use a glass water bottle, that's kind of dangerous because it could break. So plastic, foam that's not compressible, excellent. And if you're pushing down on the arms of a chair, you're able to distract that body. Now, for any type of thoracic deviations, we can move it up, move it over, bend it around. There's a lot of different positions for this. But before you do this, you've got to look at the structure because you may want to have it a little bit on one side. So you're getting a little bit more of a lift there, a little bit on the other side. It has to be placed specifically um, based on your x-rays and your exam findings. And this is just a standard to restore the curve in the lumbar um, and making sure that there's no surgeries there. Wait, this is interesting. The muscles, the intrinsic muscles of the spine are so small. They're like half the diameter of your pinky finger. Now, but they have four times the amount of sensory components, muscle spindle receptors, than the standard skeletal muscle. And what they're thinking is that these muscles don't really move the bone, but they do provide a huge amount of sensory input to that brain. That means the position, motion, and communication of those verte vertebral segments communicate to the brain massively important. Does that mean that if you have a structural deviation, you're getting abnormal stimulation of the brain? Yes. This is why you got to look at the structure. That structure equals function. It's hugely important. And these muscles that, that you know, you're talking the intertransversaria, the interspinalis, they're so small, but they have four times the amount of sensory component than the standard skeletal muscles. They have got to be used for proprioception or your body's position in space. Now, the nervous system. Now, the nervous system is the most important system of the body. Why? Because it controls and coordinates every function of the body. Every function. It's so important. It's encased in bone. A solid bone case up, up top, which actually the skull plates move. And then there are mobile vertebral segments coming down the spine. So incredibly important. Now, when we look at this picture, see, coming off the top of that thoracic area, the nerves that supply the heart and the lungs, it also supplies the entire gastrointestinal tract. Why? Because this is the sympathetic nervous system. Now, when you look at this, this is a, a slide comparing the cervical spine with the thoracic spine. And, and look at this, They're, um, the vertebrae are a little bit larger because the ribs attached to it, um, and minor spontaneous recovery. What does that mean? That means that since you have limited motion, uh, <laughs> you've got to get that motion in there in order to get the blood supply and the healing aspect. And injuries, T9 and below. And so that is, you can see uh, at the base of the, of the thoracic area, um, don't interrupt sympathetic innervation to major immune system organs. So what does that mean above T9? Does that mean that any type of structural deviation in that area can alter um, organ system function? It does, man. You've got the sympathetic, parasympathetic supply. So each one of these segments 
has an area of innervation. It's called a dermatome. And that's an area of skin supplied by a specific nerve root. So just doing an x-ray will show you structural deviations. Checking the dermatomes will show you what segments are involved. Because you could have a huge structural deviation and not have the nervous system that supplies that skin um, involved. And just know that if you have any thoracic issues where it's bent, a, a minor scoliosis, a, a, a buckling of the spine, loss of curve, increased kyphosis, decreased kyphosis, all of these things can affect that nervous system. Hugely important. And then you've got that sympathetic parasympathetic supply. The, and this is where you, you live your life through balance. Okay, you need this autonomic nervous system in harmony, in balance. So you can tiger, okay, you can run away from a tiger. Okay, beautiful. If you get that sympathetic stimulus, that fight or flight stimulus, instantly blood supply to the gut shuts down and blood flows to the arms and legs so you could run away. Now, if you're in a chronic state of physical, chemical, or emotional stress, the sympathetics are going to be active a lot. And this means tissue repair is going to be shut down. And if you have a thoracic deviation, that can absolutely affect the autonomic nervous system. And this is huge. And this is one of the things that doctors miss. Because if you have a chronic state of stress, that means that your body is going to be responding that way. So what happens to thyroid function? Oh, it decreases. What happens to blood sugar? Well, that liver starts breaking glycogen down to glucose, so blood sugar goes up. So all of these aspects, so if people talk about adrenal fatigue or low-functioning thyroid or, or digestive disorders, you have any alteration in organ system function. What controls those organs? Oh, the autonomic nervous system. So you've got to look for problems with the cervical spine, the pelvis, and the thoracic area. It's hugely important. Now, you've got the heart here. The heart comes up through the common carotid, then it splits right at that junction where it goes internal and external. There's two sensors. One senses carbon dioxide. The other senses blood pressure. So if carbon dioxide levels are high, then the heart rate increases to bring that carbon dioxide levels down low. And you've got these sensors. But now what are you doing? You're getting more blood supply to the lungs where the lungs housed in the middle of that thoracic area. So those ribs move in a bucket handle action. So does that mean that anybody with a thoracic deviation can have an altered oxygen carbon dioxide transfer? Ow, man, blows your mind. So does that mean that blood pressure um, elevations could be an adaptations to a structural uh, problem? Duh. I know. It's like, it makes so much sense. Then when you look at this, okay, this is literally, um, the, the, they also call it dorsal thoracic and and I love this because one of the founders of chiropractic I said D12 was the most important um and his son said C1 was the most important guess which one was right both because when you're looking at that spinal cord that spinal cord stops around D uh, the, the 12th thoracic and the first lumbar it stops down there and any pressure on that area is called cauda equina syndrome shutting blood supply down to the entire gastrointestinal tract. Hugely important. You can see thyroid, heart, lungs, gallbladder, stomach, pancreas, kidneys. They all get that innervation from there. So this, now that you understand this, look at these structural deviations. Look at the increased kyphosis. Look at the lower doses. Look at, I mean, at the base of the neck, at the top of the thoracic area, you'll see even a buffalo hump on some people where their body has literally had so much trauma that it's distorting to take the pressure off of that, that nervous system. And so these spinal distortions, you've got to suspect that there can be this can be an adaptation to past trauma protecting that nervous system. Now, the heart has two different nerve supplies. One comes out of the top of the neck, one comes out of the top of the thoracic area. Okay, there's the sympathetic supply, there's the parasympathetic supply. And these things alter that heart rate and function. So it has to do with, with a lot of different stimuli, but mainly it's your, your perception of the environment. If you perceive the environment as dangerous, then the heart rate goes up. If you perceive it as safe, then the heart rate could go down. It's in, <laughs> and just think of this. It's at the top of the ribcage area. That's a sympathetic supply to the heart. 
So if you've had some type of structural deviation, doesn't it make sense that your body be rounding over or increasing that kyphosis to get the pressure off? I know, it's pretty cool. Okay, now the breathing, the diaphragm, it attaches at the bottom of the rib cage. Now the ner innervation for the diaphragm comes out of the neck. So does that mean that if you have some type of um, respiration or breathing issue or breathing anomaly, and I'm talking like, like from COPD to asthma, or if you have an adaptation to poor breathing, such as elevations or changes in blood pressure, cholesterol, all of those things can, can, make a, um, can be secondary to the lack of getting rid of the oxygen or diaphragmatic function. Also, when you look at this diaphragm, what pierces that? Well, you've got the esophagus. And if that esophagus, and that's the food tube, that goes right in the top of the stomach, and the stomach is right underneath that diaphragm. So if you have compromised nerve supply to the diaphragm, if the diaphragm is, is not functioning correctly, and that diaphragm, which is a flat muscle, starts to weaken, then that stomach can pooch up through that diaphragm, leading to what's called a hiatal hernia, could lead to severe gastritis, reflux, a number of different things. But where does that diaphragm attach? The thoracic area. Does that mean altered thoracic position can alter that function? Absolutely. But also C3, C4, C5 keeps you alive. That means the middle of the neck, middle of the bottom, that's the phrenic nerve. That's where that gets its, its nerve supply. I, I, I want you to understand that your body is alive because you're able to get amino acids from the proteins, fatty acids from the fats, and usable sugars from the carbohydrates. And that is your digestion. Understand, under physical, chemical, and emotional stress, blood supply to that digestive tract is shut down. It's, it's literally decreased. So if you're in a chronic fight-or-flight state, it means you can't build a healthy body. This is why a number of different conditions result from an adaptations from a chronic stress environment. I, I just I want you to own this. Okay, now, this is a really, really cool video where I describe how to how to adjust or take meningeal tension off is you do not want to push down because the table will push back so i'm going to support the asis with the soft tissue out of range and this is going to be a shearing motion where one comes up and one comes down to release the pressure on that area and there's a nice little cavitation and i'm going to drop the abdominal suspension yeah, I, th you got to figure that, that you don't want to just push from the back to the front. So even though, you know, there's certain massage techniques where people will walk on the back, uh, you can put that side of the rib where the ribs fracture under incredible force loading. So that adjustment that I just demonstrated, the meningeal tension release, is fantastic. I've done that on, on incredibly osteoporotic, and I'm talking like post-chemotherapy patients. Okay, and it, you're still able to adjust that, de-stress out that thoracic area without causing fractures. So that is a phenomenal technique. But again, I wouldn't do that technique unless I had done the exam, the x-rays, looked at the lumbar, looked at the cervical spine, um, because that de-stressing out that area, those meninges, the meninges, the out, outer meninges is called dura mater, and it has its own blood supply. And that thing can get bound up. And, and literally cause breathing and ab abnormalities that could just put that body under a lot of stress. So know that if you have a chiropractor and they do before and after x-rays where they're going to um, find a structural deviation and then do a second x-ray to document that they're fixing it, beautiful. That's a good start. And this is why when we do our five keys to health, Proper nerve supply. Why? What's in the middle of the thoracic area? The sympathetic nerve supply system. What's connected on the top and bottom? The parasympathetic nerve su supply and or nervous system. And this is literally how the body regenerates itself. So the nervous system controls and coordinates every function of the body. Is it important? Yeah. And we're looking at the, one of the structures that houses it. <laughs> Duh. Okay. And regular exercise. You have to move that body. You've got to get those those, the, the joints moving, if they do, all the vertebral segments, they're separated by discs, you move them, fluid gets into those discs, it's fantastic.
and then proper nutrition. There's no magic to this. Just eat the same way your great-great-grandparents did. Healthy, organic, seasonal. You know, the majority, you're going to be eating plants. If you want to go carnivore diet, beautiful. You can't do it for too long. If you, well, actually, there's a lot of people that can do it for a long time. <laughs> really depends on how you're metabolizing and getting healthy fats. Okay, so there's a lot of different fad diets out there, but just know that that depending on your ancient history, and I'm talking 10,000 generations before, okay, eat in that environment because when you're looking at like the blue zones, you get people that are total vegetarians, you get total uh, meat eaters. The, 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 in Sicily, it's you're looking at seven liters of red wine and then you have some teetotalers in the book, The Blue Zones, areas around the world um, that people consistently live over 100. They have a variety of diets. And so just, just look at the basic, organic, free of preservatives, seasonal, and varied. And every time you get a different color, you're getting different phytonutrients. Sleep is when the body regenerates. It is so, so important. Okay. And if you master sleep and check out our videos, if you're not a good sleeper, you can reset your circadian rhythms. Then prayer and meditation. Every study that shows that when you're adding prayer in here um, and into any type of activity, okay, particularly when it's come for health, you are going to get better results. <laughs> I mean, just having a few minutes connecting with a power greater than yourself, um, you're talking, you're going to increase your life force energy. And that's a good thing. Now, um, I'd post your questions down below. I'm going to get to as many as I can. Uh, we're going to have to do them in two different batches because sometimes the questions asked are, are on sensitive topics and um, the, the powers that govern the information over here, I'm trying to keep it as clean as possible so we keep our channel. Um, and <laughs> the uncensored questions will be on our Dr. BVIP site. So, so act quickly, share this video, and, and um, put your comments below. God bless you. Stay healthy, my friends. Thank you.